Hey guys, it's Danny with Perspective. So we've been covering on the show the disastrous escalation that uh, Trump has put us in with Iran, the assassination of both an Iraqi general or an Iranian general and an Iraqi militia leader. And, well, Tulsi Gabbard talked about this on Fox News of all places. What do you make of the president's order to take out Soleimani? Uh, this was very clearly an act of war by this president without any kind of authorization or declaration of war from Congress, clearly violating uh, the Constitution. It further escalates this tit for tat that's going on and on and on will elicit a very serious response from Iran and pushing us mm -hmm. deeper and deeper into this quagmire. And it really begs the question, for what? What are we trying to accomplish? That, what, is the, what is the end state and the goal here? Uh, look, I've, I've said for a long time that going to war with Iran would make the war in Iraq uh, and, and even Afghanistan look like a picnic. It will be far more costly and devastating in American lives and in taxpayer dollars. And I don't believe the American people want to go to war with Iran. They, they understand how serious this is. Okay, so Tulsi Gabbard is making, I think, the really important point that we didn't, this was not authorized by Congress. This was not an action, this was Trump unilaterally deciding to take out, I don't know, the George Washington of Iran. This was a guy who, by all accounts, was incredibly popular within Iran, who uh, has obviously done things. He's a general, of course, he's done bad things. And of course, the U.S. has. Um, propagandized Iran and the Middle East for decades. So you're not, get, got, you're not gonna get a lot of people who say otherwise, but Tulsi's making, I think, the most salient point that you can't just kill someone because of reasons. Let's keep going. Congresswoman, how do you justify it when you look at the statistics? The State Department says 70% of all U.S. deaths in Iraq from 2003 to 2011 were orchestrated by Soleimani. I mean, are we, when they attack our embassy, are we supposed to just stand by and let the Iranian-backed militias invade our territory and possibly kill Americans? Yeah, no, look, there, there is no question about how evil this guy is. No one should shed a single tear for his death. But that's not really the question here. The real question is, what are we trying to accomplish here in this country? And where will this decision that this president made to, to uh, escalate this, uh, these tensions and this crisis and, and commit this act of war without congressional authorization, it will lead us to, a, to an outcome that actually further undermines our national security and needlessly sends more of our troops into harm's way. You know, Trump talked a lot in his campaign for, for uh, the presidency, and even since he's been in office, about how he wants to end forever wars. But his actions tell a different story. Uh, just since May of last year alone, May of 2019 alone, we've seen more than 15,000 U.S. troops, additional U.S. troops, being deployed across the Middle East. All of these actions pushing us closer and closer to this war uh, with Iran. And this step that he just took last night uh, seriously, seriously escalated the situation. Okay, this is a tough point to go with. She's calling him out as a bad guy and no one should shed a tear over. Is that true? From the U.S. perspective, I suppose. From Iranian perspective, perspective no it's not um can we would iran have the right to say basically the same thing about uh, an american general yeah i think that the, she's making this greater point though that is really what matters in this and that is that you can't just start a war like this especially with iran they know we're coming they've been preparing for us for a long period of time. And the Fox is just blatant uh, rehashing, uh, regurgitation of what the State Department has said. Oh, this guy has done all these killings, 70% of the killings. I've never heard those before. And I don't think before this assassination happened, anyone watching this actually has heard of this guy. I know like the only person on the team who had even heard of this guy in passing was Paul. No one in the U.S. knew about this guy. No one knew who he was. And now the media is going to start acting like they've been talking about him all along. And then they, of course, are going to go down this route that we've been in so many times before. He's bad. He's terrible. Uh, we had to kill him. It was the only way to do things. And I don't think the U.S. is at a point where 
right now, as things are in motion, as the trigger has already been pulled, there's no time to go, okay, guys, whoa, 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 let's hold down. I know Loren's about to retaliate, but let's talk about um, the distinction of whether or not the sky was good or not. No. Right now, we're already in motion. The U.S. is already moving towards war. The die has been cast. So what do we do? The only chance we have to stop this from continuing to escalate because, again, Iran is going to retaliate, and they kind of have to. I mean, if Petraeus got taken out by Iran, we would retaliate for similar reasons. Uh, so what can America do to stop this escalation? Well, I think what Tulsi is saying is the case, that it doesn't matter if you think that this guy was bad. It's irrelevant. It's the point that you can't just go to war like this, and you can't just instigate a war by making this step. And right now, we need to stop escalation, although it may already be too late. So when you look at their influence in Iran, when you look at Iran's, excuse me, in Syria, when you look at Iran's influence in uh, Lebanon, when you look at Iran's influence in Iraq, when you look at... Uh when you look at Saudi Arabia's influence in Syria, when you look at Saudi Arabia's influence in Iraq, when you look at Saudi Arabia's funding of terrorist organizations, when you look at the U.S. backing the Saudis doing those things, I'm sorry, I'm just giving equivalencies. Go on. Uh, their influence without the, uh, throughout the region and now uh, their pursuit covert and overt of a nuclear weapon. You mean like how the U.S. is actively helping Saudi Arabia build up to nuclear tech? Of course, go on. Are you comfortable with us just pulling back and watching, just sitting in the stands and saying, pass the popcorn? Yeah, no, I think we need to we need to figure out why and how we've gotten to this point where Iran has a much greater level of influence and presence in Iraq and Syria, as you mentioned. Uh, it was because of uh, our our regime change wars in Iraq and Libya and Syria that we've seen these countries turn Iraq and Syria, especially turn more towards Iran for help and for assistance, strengthening their partnerships and allowing for Iran to gain far greater influence and presence uh, in many different respects in these countries. Mm -hmm. Really, the question that we need to ask ourselves now is we have men and women in harm's way today in these countries. And what purpose are they serving? Originally, it was that they needed to go and to, to prevent another uh, al-Qaeda uh, insurgency, an attack and threat to the United States to defeat these terrorists that attacked us on 9-11. That's the, that's the congressional authorization that our troops are there for. But really what we're seeing now is that's not actually the case. Al-Qaeda is stronger and it, 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 it is becoming more clear that our troops are really mm -hmm. there to fight against Iran once again a war that Congress has not authorized. There right. has been no declaration uh, I don't of war think against I don't think Iran, we're and I think fight that's a really Iran. important I think point. That was a and there you have it. That's the thesis of Tulsi Gabbard that is so important in this context. When the U.S. invaded Iraq, Iraq was a natural enemy of Iran, thanks to Saddam Hussein, a terrible dictator who we were happy to be allies with, very much as we are happy to be allies with Saudi Arabia right now. And, uh, of course, Iran and Iraq share a lot of the same view on Islam. So, when we toppled Iraq, this majority that had been repressed by Iraq, by Saddam, all of a sudden brought itself back up. And so now, thanks to our invasion of Iraq, if you don't want to give Iran power, congratulations, you gave it a huge amount of power over Iraq. The exact same thing happened with uh, Syria. And at the same time, you have Wahhabism being spread by the Saudis, and that's going unchecked. Of course, we're going to have to deal with that for the next 50, 60 years after all this is said and done. But this is the point. If we go into Iran, why would anything get better? It's 80 million people. You want to want to get a lot of them. You want to give a lot of them no hope. Want to give a lot of them who have nothing to lose a reason to hate a, America. That's a really Iran. important. I point. think that was a response to the rocketing it of just our happened. base and then the and then it the just hitting happened, though. our embassy. I want to remind everyone: no one died in the embassy. There was some stuff that got burned, and so far, the only casualty on the American side is one mercenary. 
which I didn't know we cared so much about. I feel like we care more about mercenaries dying than we do soldiers. Um, meanwhile, the U.S. has at this point killed um, almost 30 people, has injured about 100 others, and we are the ones that are escalating the situation through and through. So any talk of like, oh, this had to happen, this is, oh, there was planning. And who did plan? America planned for a drone strike. So if, if anyone that's planned for this, America planned to go into Iraq. America planned to try and take out the Middle East in the way it has. America has planned to work with Saudi Arabia and their terrorist organizations. Everyone planned to do things just because this guy might or may not have planned to do something maybe in the future in a war zone where people are supposed to die since it's a war zone. This seems a bit far-fetched. This seems a bit hypocritical. Uh, Congress returns to work today. That's your other uh, full-time job in addition to running for president. Uh, you know, a lot of people are looking in at Nancy Pelosi. Okay, we're going to stop the video right there. I really don't care what uh, Nancy Pelosi has to say on impeachment. What we're really talking about, what really matters is, are we going to go to war with Iran or not? Guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Till next time.